looking gorgeous. Getting very accurate with his strikes. Go ahead. <laughs> He's like a little cobra right now. There you go. Good boy. You can see that black interior in his mouth. Famous for why they're called the Black Mamba. Look at that. That is a stunning looking Eastern Diamondback Rattlesnake, the largest species of rattler on our planet. This is my favorite viper species on the planet. Lachesis muda, the South American Bushmaster. <gasps> look how big she is getting. I mean, look at that. She is a beast. You can see him flexing his venom glands. The venom glands are on the back of the skull and they hold all the venom. When they contract their muscles, it shoots them throughout the ducts, which are their fangs, delivering a deadly concoction of venom. I'm so excited. My first bite. Go. to say I just I just don't know how I want to put it but I miss you and sometimes I regret what I did that day but it was conservation and I know that you know this while you're up in heaven with Johnny Cash and Elvis ripping wheelies and Steve Irwin I know Steve Irwin's ripping a, a hard fat wheelie on you right now I love you Green Mamba only if I could hear you go one more time. No, no, engine's flooded. There's never ever gonna be a bike like you. Never. Barry, you got anything to say? Okay. This is goodbye, my friend. This is goodbye. Sweet prince. All right, beautiful people. Let's get on to the show. We got lots of animals to feed. Mr. Bakes is just waking up and we got a beautiful hibiscus flower that I just stole from a funeral. Let's go see how he's doing. Okay, my beautiful, beautiful people. How are you doing today? I'm doing beautiful. This is my buddy, Mr. Bakes, the Utila Island Iguana. You want some, you want some hibiscus flowers? He loves these, but he's a little bit spooked with the camera. Definitely doesn't like the camera. I'm gonna take this flower and put it right here next to his food. And as well as my handy dandy banana, I carry my pocket everywhere I go. Just right. You want some of this? Hmm? You want some banana, buddy? No, you're just gonna bask? Okay, we're gonna put this banana right over here. 
and he's gonna munch on that. He's got all kinds of good stuff. We're gonna let him be Mr. Bakes the Critically Endangered Utila Island Iguana. This guy hopefully will have a girlfriend in the next year or so because we're gonna be building him a huge, like 20 foot long, 10 foot deep enclosure, about seven, eight feet high. We're gonna put a creek through it so he's gonna get the best habitat, nice big spacey area so we can breed the most critically endangered species on our planet because it's all about preservation, education, <laughs> and dirt bikes. <laughs> Too soon. Let's go feed some snakes. Okay, my beautiful people, my, my, my friends, my family, you. Gregor, hello. Okay, what's going on, beautiful people? We're hanging out in the Serpentarium. We got a lot of badass stuff going on. Besides, uh, besides all these rats and stuff. Let me put that down. That's a lot. Besides all those rats and whatnot, we got a lot cooking. I mean, you can see we cleared out this area. That's because we're gonna be rebuilding a wall right here. Roll up door is gonna be down, new wall, and then from there we're gonna move on to drywalling the whole entire Serpentarium. So this whole place is gonna look beautiful, it's gonna look clean, we're gonna get new floors, walk-in King Cobra enclosures in the back, I already got the measurements for what I wanna do, and just about here's 14 feet from the back of the wall, right here's about 15 feet, I'm thinking 14 or 15 feet for the King Cobra enclosures depth, just to give it a nice big space, look at that, it's gonna be nice. King Cobra cage here, big black mama cage here, big King Cobra cage here, it's cooking, we're going, we're moving on, it's gonna be great, I mean like, look at this, we decided that instead of getting Amazon Stingrays and Arapaima, we're actually gonna use this huge tank. I mean, like, look how thick this is. That's a big tank. We're gonna use this for the yellow anaconda, the big female. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna build a whole entire enclosure on the top of this tank, and then the yellow anaconda is gonna be able to hang out on the land, bask, do its thing, and also come into the water, so you can see the yellow anaconda swimming in the water and also feeding in the water. We're gonna do feeding videos right here in the big tank, it's gonna be awesome. She deserves it, she's lived a crazy life, and she deserves a nice place to live the rest of her life, so I'm super, I'm out of breath, I'm so excited. Look at this, we moved all the bioactive enclosures over here, so now they're up on the table again, they're lit up, we cleaned the glass, made it look nice, we're gonna hook up the misters, we got the beautiful Uricone rattlesnake right here. I think we'll start maybe feeding with the Uricone, it's going through shed, but its eyes aren't too milky, so it'll still eat, so let's actually give them a feed. We're also gonna be taking care of some snakes as well. Besides feeding, we're gonna be cleaning. Bushmasters, both Bushmasters went to the bathroom, and they didn't get a good clean. My big female just shed her skin, so I'm gonna clean her enclosure out. We're gonna take her out in a minute. But first, let's feed this beautiful Yurikone rattlesnake. Let's try this, a little weaned rat. It's a bit bigger than the usual meal for this snake, but he can definitely take it down. Let's see, you want it? A nice weaned rat, nice protein. Ooh, perfect bite to the head. This snake is looking real like cocoa looking color, like a little chocolatey, uh, dusty looking color. It's because this one's going through shed. But as soon as that snake pops out, it's that beautiful cookies and cream coloration, dark black with white spots everywhere. It's such an awesome snake, only found in Venezuela. All right guys, what we're gonna do is lock it up. Nice and secure. We're gonna make sure the top's on right. We're gonna get footage of this beautiful snake chowing down. And then afterwards, let's go take care of some more snakes. We'll take care of the Bushmasters next. All right guys, what we're gonna do now while the Uricone is chowing down, we're gonna take care of this big female Bushmaster. Oh, I'm sorry, I don't mean spooky look Allison, the big black mamba, she's stretched out. Looks like she just went to the bathroom in her water bowl, so I'll have to clean that up later. But for now, let's take care of this big, beautiful female Bushmaster. You can see she shed her skin and she took a spicy meatball right there in the corner. It's very disgusting. So let's get that clean. Literally just shed last night. I saw her crawling around. She's probably gonna be hungry, so I gotta definitely be careful because these snakes are not seeking missiles. They will literally just shoot out if they think there's food around. She's looking really good. Check this out. Woo! Look how beautiful you are. That is a stellar looking snake. This is my favorite viper species on the planet. Lachesis muda, the South American Bushmaster. <gasps> look how big she is getting. I mean, look at that. She is a beast. You know, she's still a very dangerous animal. I wouldn't let her get too close to me. Uh, but she's definitely more laid back than her sibling, the male Bushmaster I have, is definitely a snake that will give you a run for your money if you're not paying attention. Uh, I was working with my male Bushmaster not long ago, 
And when I was taking him out of the can, he literally shot out as I was getting him with the hook and the tail. He literally shot up, right about here, shot up and nearly got me in my bicep. That is right next to the major arteries and veins, next to your heart, that is a deadly bite. So it's always good to be on your toes, no matter what snake it is, how long you've been working with it. These snakes have heat seeking pits. Anything with a warm bodied signature, a heat signature, they're gonna lock onto with their fangs. And if they get you with that venom, it's deadly. It's literally like 85 to 90% fatality rate if you get bit by a Bushmaster, even with anti-venom, I mean, Yikes, that's a deadly snake. Its scientific name literally translates to silent death. You know, they don't have a rattle like a rattlesnake, but they'll take their tail and smack it against the leaves to sound like a rattlesnake. Uh, but that's all you're gonna hear is a warning at night when you're walking too close to one of the forests of South America, Southern Peru. Look at that beautiful shed skin, just came off last, oh my God, look, it's still wet. It's still wet, look at that. This is so cool looking. I mean, look at the pattern. That is just too cool. I mean, Bushmaster, the world's largest viper. Lachesis muda can get literally 12 feet long and have fangs like that long. That's a big fang, and if it pumps you with that venom, you're out of luck. We're gonna get out all this net. Oh, look at that, look at that. Check, all right, look at this. So when snakes shed their fangs, just like sharks and crocodiles, they'll shed their fangs. Right as that old fang leaves, the new fang will be able to inject that venom and sometimes when they're eating their food, the fang comes out and they'll digest and poop it out, but the fang never digests completely. Look at this. That is her fang. She literally ate her fang and pooped it out. Imagine pooping out a fang. Doesn't sound comfortable. Let me get the skin back here, get the rest of it. Gotta be real careful. I got the fang right here. I'm gonna go clean this up real quick and we'll go put it in my jar of fangs. All right, look at that. Beautiful, huge Bushmaster fang. And it's just crazy because this snake is just two and a half years old or so now. We're gonna put that right with the rest of the fangs. My little fang collection right here. We got all types of fangs. We got Childish Gambino's fangs right here. We have more Bushmaster fangs. We have a Waggler's Pit Viper. We'll put that Bushmaster in there. That thing's getting big. I love keeping a little, little chest of memories close to my heart. <laughs> what we gotta do now is take care of this Bushmaster. We gotta sanitize the enclosure, so we took out all the poop, but we still wanna kill out all the germs. You know, just because we don't see them, doesn't mean they're not there. This snake laid a nice spicy meatball. We wanna make sure all this is killed off. This is chlorhexanine diluted, so we just put a little bit of chlorhexanine, and then we fill the rest up with water. And that's great to sanitize the enclosure. All right, guys, we're putting the paper towel in. Gonna make it nice and neat. If you guys are wondering why I use paper towel for substrate, it's just real easy to maintain these snakes in here. They're such a delicate species. You can't have them too wet or they'll get a uh, red belly, which is a fungal infection that'll kill them. And also, I don't want to keep them too dry, so there's a little bit of a, a balance in between the two. So we like to take the snake out, we'll soak it in the can, let it hydrate that way as if it's in the rainforest, but we don't let the enclosure get too wet because that's how you get the red belly issue. There we go, hides in there, we're good to go. I'm going to get some Fresh water. Look, this water is actually good, but uh, we don't think it's good enough. Okie dokie, we've got the fresh H2O. I, I almost want to drink it myself, but I won't. It's selfish. That right there, there we go. We can get her back to where she belongs. All right, always using a tool to open up the can because you never know where that snake's gonna be. Ooh, look at you, beautiful, beautiful woman. Yow! Look at that snake. That is a beautiful viper. I mean, come on. You don't have to like snakes to think this is beautiful. This is just a stunning animal. I mean, getting a little too close, but a stunning reptile. And to have raised this snake up from a little baby is incredible. I mean, I'm gonna put this snake in the enclosure right now, but I got a photo right here of right before I picked up the snake. Look at that beautiful tail. If you look, this photo right here, that's when my Bushmaster was just a wee baby and now she's like four and a half feet long. She's become such a beast, I'm so proud of her. She's gonna be an amazing educational ambassador for the Bushmaster. Because, oops, sorry. Because this is a species that is feared throughout South America, Central and South America. And the reality of it is, these snakes want nothing to do with us. You're only gonna get bit if you tread on them, meaning you step on them real hard, or you try to grab one behind the head and mess with it, or try to kill it because it's too close to your house. You don't want to do that. Always call out a professional to remove a deadly venomous snake from your home. 
because you don't need to kill these animals. They are keystone species. They manage the other animals in the ecosystem, making sure populations don't go out of whack. You don't want too many spiny rats in the rainforest. You want just the right amount of rodents, just the right amount of snakes, just the right amount of people, and everything's perfectly balanced. There's a food chain out there, and you don't want to start taking links out of the food chain, or everything's just gonna fall apart. Okie dokie, now that we're done taking care of my sweet, beautiful Bushmaster. Look at her, I mean like seriously, that is a bad ass snake. Look at the black line that goes right past their eyeball. Woo! Love it. But you know what's an even cooler snake? I mean, it's a bit of a false stretch, but this is one of the coolest snakes on the planet. This is Meatball, the Colette snake, only found in the heart of Queensland, Australia. Actually very rare to find alive in the wild. And the only time that people actually find these snakes are usually when they get hit by cars and they're dead on the road. He loves to eat his rodents, and you're about to see how fast he is too. Him being an Alapidae family member means he has a fast metabolism, he's a fast moving snake, and he has fast working venom, one of the most potent neurotoxins on the planet. He's slightly dull in coloration, but usually when he comes fresh out of shed, he's fiery red. I mean, like, look at that earthy red coloration. He's so beautiful. When I got him, he was so small, too. It's getting big. Come on, come on. Woo! Boop, 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 boop. Look at that. He's becoming a beast. You remember when I first got Meatball? He was probably just two feet long. He's probably about three and a half feet long now. Look at that. You can see him flexing his venom glands. The venom glands are on the back of the skull and they hold all the venom. When they contract their muscles, it shoots them throughout the ducts, which are their fangs, delivering a deadly concoction of venom to their prey. I mean, this snake is definitely a very potent top tier venomous snake, but the reality of it is, it lives in the middle of nowhere and never comes into contact with people. And the only recorded bites ever were in captivity with people who keep these animals and have to handle them. Luckily, Meatball and I are good buddies and uh, we'll avoid any incidents. I'm actually gonna tuck that rat in just a little bit more so he can feed in here. Oh, he's just pumping away. He's still pumping venom in that little rodent. Oh, gotta watch out for that rat's tail. I'm sorry, Mr. Rodent, but I'm sure you didn't feel anything. Let's make sure it's nice and secure. All right, we're gonna let the snake feed and then we're gonna move on to the next animal. All right, beautiful people, we're gonna be feeding Childish Gambino. He's a hybrid between a Gaboon Viper and a Rhino Viper. He's, oh, almost stuck on the rats. He's doing real good. We got a nice medium rat right here for him. And we feed him about once a month because this is a short, fat-bodied snake that is an ambush hunter. They don't use a lot of their energy. They don't have a fast metabolism. So, oh, <laughs> what kind of strike was that? You notice he's looking a little bit dull in coloration. Like everything's a little bit faded. He is going through shed, so he's got like that gray tone to him, but he's still a magnificent looking snake. I mean, like, look at that pattern. He is such a beast. And we have a bunch of fangs from him as well that have shed, and they're decent sized fangs. Even though he's a hybrid, the Gabuna Viper alone has the world's longest fangs of any venomous reptile on the planet, getting over two and a half inches long. That's huge. Imagine getting hit with two of those fangs and getting pumped with a venom that has cardiotoxins. Venom that literally attacks your heart. Adios mio! Alright guys, we have two of the Gaboon Vipers right here. These are pure Gaboon Vipers. We're going to try and feed them without having any issues because we got both Gaboons hanging out right here. So let's see if we can feed this one on this angle. Come on. Whoop. So there are a couple species or two species of Gaboon Viper and these would be Rhinosaurus which have the more predominant horns on the front of their snout. Come on. This one's whoop, going through shed but not a problem. They hit like missiles, and when they bite onto a rat, they hold it off of the ground. So in the wild, if this rat was alive, it can't kick off the ground and disorientate the snake. Instead, the snake holds it up in the air and lets it kick as much as it wants until the venom takes effect. It dies, and then these guys can start to swallow them down. They literally look like dinosaurs when they prop up like this and eat their food. They're so cool. Ah, time for some mambas. All right. Y'all know that when we deal with the mambas, they're a little bit, uh, a little bit cheeky for the food. So we gotta make sure we gotta make sure we put this lock box right over here. We have to separate the mambas. They'll literally go after each other when they feed. So let's 
Let's do this. This is no joke. One of the most potent neurotoxins in all the animal kingdom. All right, let's make sure we know where both mambas are. You can only see one right now. I think the other one might actually be up on the lip. Uh, I believe I see another head back there. I believe that's two mambas. Yep, we got two mambas back there. All right, so we're going to lift this glass up because I have special insulation to keep these mambas from getting out. All right, guys, I think what we're going to do is get two nice looking rat pups, some nice big ones. Maybe actually three because that's still not big enough meal. The wiener rats are a little bit too big for my liking to feed to these guys. So now that we have the two, three rat pups in there, we can put the green mamba in there with the food and leave the other green mamba in here to feed. Come on. And we will be separating these green mambas very soon, so I don't even have to do this anymore. There we go, that's a beautiful, oh my god, I can't get over these guys, they're so stunning. Come on. There we go, beautiful green mamba. Get him right, oh, relax. Get him right into the box. Get his head redirected. Oh, he, he's already gonna chomp into those rats. He got scent, he got the scent of them and he just started going right over to them. All right, we're gonna close that up. The other green mamba is still in the back. We're gonna leave that just like that for now. And we're gonna feed this green mamba. Slide that glass right over. Come on, you hungry? You in there? You want some food? They're a little bit shy. They're not as crazy as my other snakes when it comes to feeding. Come on. Look. Oh, you're going through shed. Still hungry though. Look, he's still interested. I'll just leave those rat pups right there. Maybe throw in another one. There we go. I mean rat pinks, not pups. All right, we're gonna put this back. There we go. We'll put a lock on that for now. Nice and secure. And we'll put this little piece of foam right in there at the top to make sure it's extra secure. All right, guys, next we're gonna be taking out these Diamondbacks. We're gonna at least separate one of them so they can feed individually. They don't steal each other's food. So we're gonna just knock that to the side. I think we got the male right here, the beautiful dark charcoal saddled male. I mean, like, look at him. He's a beautiful looking boy. He just shed. I just cleaned up the, the poop and shed and whatnot. Look at that, that is a nasty beautiful rattlesnake. A nasty just by, just cool looking. Not nasty at all in temperament, a beautiful snake. Look at that. That is a stunning looking Eastern Diamondback rattlesnake, the largest species of rattler on our planet. There's already a rat in the box, so we're just going to stick him right in there. We're gonna give him his privacy. Make sure his rattle's in there. There we go. Close that up so we're good to go. And we're going to stick another rat in here for that female. Hello. Ow! Oh. <coughs> Very good. We're going to take that lock. And where is my lock? There it is. And we go. Not now. Secure. Beautiful. We're going to let that rattler eat. Let's feed the Indian cobra. Beautiful, beautiful Indian cobra right here. Love this guy. You want some food, dude? Want some food? Oh! No problem at all. Here you go, buddy. You can take that, enjoy. Take that tail, put it in there. There we go. And we'll make sure it's nice and secure. All right, beautiful people, we're gonna be feeding Kobe Dinkelman, the black mamba, he's right here looking at this little rat pink. Let's see if he'll come over to the edge. Come on, Kobe. Come on. Come on, Kobe. Come on, Kobe. Beautiful, year plus old black mamba, getting big, looking gorgeous, getting very accurate with his strikes, very, very, right? You're gonna be very accurate, correct? Because you're kind of in the direction of my body. There you go, buddy. Come on. Come on. Oh, a little tag? What, a little tag for you? Come on, Go oh, a little more? Grab onto it. Go ahead. <laughs> He's like a little cobra right now. There you go. Good boy. You can see that black interior in his mouth. Famous for why they're called the black mamba. 
and also them being in the Elapidae family, they'll be in this position defensively and they'll actually flare up the skin around their neck right there. They'll flare up the ribs and kind of look like a cobra's hood because they're related to the cobras. Come on. Let's get you in there, buddy. <laughs> Come on. There you go. There you go. Let's get them in there. There, perfect. We can put a lock on this so it's nice and secure. Let's enjoy Kobe munching down on this rat pink. He's so cute. But not least, we're gonna be feeding my green anacondas. You can see my female's ready to go. She can smell the rat. And if you guys didn't see the last feeding episode, then you wouldn't have, uh, you wouldn't know that these little little beauties are eating rats now. Look, I wouldn't even look. Because I'm so, I'm so confident in these guys eating rats, right? You're gonna eat the rat? I'm so confident in her eating the rat. She's, she's eating it right now, isn't she? You want the rat? Huh? Huh? Good girl. Getting real thick, too. I mean, like, look how thick she's getting. That is a beast of a little green anaconda. I'd love to see one of these snakes out in the wild too. Oh, little Kobe Dinkleman, what are you doing? You're done eating. He's looking around, he wants some more food. Maybe I'll defrost another rat pink. Let's get this other rat. Oh, you're actually going through shed. Deep, deep in blue, look at that. Totally blind, but it's picking up the scent with that forked tongue. I guess, still hungry, right? You want that rat? Go ahead, it's all you. Oh, perfect wrap around. And you can see the big difference between when they're in shed, deep in shed with that bluish hue, versus nice and clean out of shed, looking gorgeous. All right, beautiful people, that's gonna be it for this episode. I'll see you on the next one. Stay beautiful, stay safe, and most of all, don't forget to check us out on chandlerswildlife.com so you can get your own Chandler's Wildlife merchandise. I mean, like, look at that. That is a badass Coco Drillo design. I love it so much. And also check us out on Patreon for exclusive content not seen anywhere else. If you guys want to help support the build out of this Serpentarium, of this 11 acre conservatory for endangered reptiles, then you guys can get on Patreon. You can buy t-shirts, jackets, stickers, whatever you want from the merchandise site. It all helps. And if you can't afford to get any of that stuff, just watching the videos, sharing with your friends, giving us a like, any of that stuff helps. I'll see you on the next one. Stay beautiful, stay safe, and most of all, love your anacondas. I love you so much. Stay beautiful, stay passionate, and don't forget to stay gangster. <laughs>